Yo, what is up, nerds? We've got a ranking video. I've listened to some albums. Now I can rank this entire top 10. I'm hoping that after I rank this top 10, I'll be able to rank the top 25, then the top 50, then the top 100, and then I can rank 200 whole albums. Now, that will be a lot of work, obviously, first of all, because it's 200 albums, and second of all, some albums drop out, some new albums come in, and I might, I'm gonna have to choose a week where, or, how do I explain it, like, I'm hoping when I get that video out, it'll be the most recent version of the Billboard 200, so I'm gonna have to listen to a few albums, and then upload the video in the same week, but anyway, we're starting easy. There's only 10 here for now, my dog is barking and some nerds are doing karaoke downstairs so there's a lot of noise, I hope you can hear it, but starting at the bottom is actually the only bad album in this top 10 which is Nicki Minaj's Pink Friday 2, I'm surprised how much I like this top 10, I chose a good time to get this ranking, but anyways, Pink Friday 2, it's, it was pretty lazy for Nicki Minaj if you ask me, it's like there was not a, there was way less Nicki Minaj than you would even expect. It was like, for many of the hooks, she wasn't even there. She just took a sample and just, just let it run on loop. And well, that's the kind of stuff that appeals to TikTok, right? So I understand why she did that doesn't mean I like it. Next up, at number nine, we have Lover by Taylor Swift. I think this is one of her worst albums. It's still... Okay, like as I said, Pink Friday 2 is the only bad one here. The, the rest are neutral or good, but I'm not, I'm not sure why. Lover just doesn't do much for, for me. Look at that cover. It looks so... Like, it looks colorful. It is pretty colorful. At the same time, it is plain. I just... Her songwriting wasn't as good as it is now. Her singing... Well, it, her singing was fine, but it just didn't do much for me i'm not sure can i say anything else yeah it's no i can't say anything else because i can't remember anything from this album it's so forgettable apart from like cruel summer and then maybe daylight and another one about americana there wasn't much here that's worth returning to but there's nothing to hate in either so next up at number eight we've got for All The Dogs by Drake. You know, for the past few albums, before For All The Dogs, there's just some complete garbage, like on Certified Lover Boy. Honestly, never mind. Her loss. He had some bad stuff there. And then other than that, there it was a bunch of mid. But on For All The Dogs, it's like he took the overall quality and then just improved everything so the complete garbage went up the just plain bad not the greatest and the mid went up to good so yeah i'm pretty much fine with for all the dogs i think as some of the best songs he's put out in the past few years well he has he has had some pretty good guest verses but as the lead artist on his own album he hasn't been doing the best but for all the dogs he's fine I'm gonna crazy through it. Okay. Next up, number seven, we have One Thing at a Time by Morgan Wallen. It is nearly two hours long. That's a lot of country pop to get through, but he's pretty consistent. He doesn't do that much truly horrible. Well, at the same time, he doesn't do much that's actually pretty good, but it's like two hours long but there are a lot of things you can find about this that you could enjoy so if you would just condense it down then there are many different ways how you could get a decent 40 minute album or a 40 minute playlist with just songs from this album so i'm okay with this one too i don't hate it i just wish it was shorter next up at number six we have, see I did not plan this out, I have to pick one right now. I, I'm going with Noah Khan and Stick Season. 
uh, I want to like this more than I do. There are a lot of really, really good songs on this because I really like this guy's songwriting. It's simple but sweet, but most of the songs I really like are a lot more pop. It, they're more catchy. The the slower ones, the more bare bone tracks. They, it, Noah Khan just can't survive on those. But when he's got something back, you know, like on the title track, which has been blowing up. Let's go to the uh, most recent edition. See, it's been blowing up and for good reason. I like these tracks on this album, but on the other ones, I got the tracks I'm not that big on. Next up, we have 1989 Taylor's version starting us off for the top half of this ranking because there are so many great songs, but just listen to the original instead, right? Like, I don't want to say that because Taylor's version adds five more tracks, meaning that Shake It Off is a smaller percentage of the runtime, but still, just go listen to the original next up. Number four, I'm going with, I don't know how to pronounce her name yet, actually, Kali Uchis, maybe, I'm not sure. And I'm not even going to try to to pronounce that song title, but I really like this, this person's voice. Like, that's obvious, who does not like her voice. She is so good at R&B, but sometimes the R&B is not good enough for her. You know, the production is a little mixed. But she can really nail an R&B track if everything goes well. But for some reason, like there are so many weird tracks on this album that I wasn't just a big fan of. But still, it's a really good album. You should check it out. But still not as good as these next three. And I'm going to put a number three. I think 21 Savage in American Dream. It sounds just like an, a, a 21 Savage album. He's a good rapper and he got some good beats. You know, he, he do the flex. He talk about gang violence. And yeah, he got the good beats. So just check, just put it on and then vibe. Like you don't have to pay much attention. He doesn't say much aside of some actual really good highlights on the track list but you should go listen to the album and find those highlights out for yourself and next up at number two i am gonna go with folklore from taylor swift this is also a good record uh, i think i really like the folk i think taylor swift is a really good fit for this style because she she's got some real damn good lyricism that hits so hard uh still i don't think it's the most engaging record ever maybe that's just my personal preferences because not too keen on folk but i think taylor swift did a really good job selling this album and i can 100 percent see why this has become a fan favorite even if it's not my favorite from Taylor. And finally, the ending is off. We're going with SZA and SOS. Uh, I've seen so many, like, what are they called? Newspaper people? Journalists? The things like Billboard and Rolling Stone. I forgot what the word you use for them is. But so many of those people who, like, publish music year lists like Rolling Stone, so many of them were putting SOS by SZA at the number one spot, and I can see why. It's just some really good R&B. Like, that's what SZA does. She's just got such a beautiful voice, and she can really play into the R&B sound. Like, even I, who is not the biggest fan of SZA's R&B style, still found so much enjoyment out of this and it's really solid so you've got to check it out i don't think it is great there there is nothing great in this top 10 but still SZA is the standout of these 10 albums 
But still, as I said at the start of the video, I am pretty fond of most of these. Like, I think there is a lot of good stuff. So, I'm really happy with the state of the Billboard 200 right now, I guess. Yep, that's about it. Uh, I paused a lot because, you know, this was first take. I did not plan anything here. I will plan things out when I do the full 200, but cool and good. Goodbye.